Their find is either a T-Rex or an extremely rare and elusive theropod called a Nanotyrannosaur. It's either a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex or a Nanotyrannus. But science can't agree on whether those two are unique species or one and the same. In 1988, the Nanotyrannosaur were described as a separate species and it's been hotly debated since that time. I'm on the camp of nano being a valid species and have been for a long time, just based on the fossils that we found in the hills. But with only a handful of specimens ever found, it's hard to nail it down. Tyrannosaurus rex had the longest teeth of any dinosaur. They were anchored six inches deep in the jaw, with another six inches ready to attack. These T-Rexes were killers. They had these teeth that I call lethal bananas. They just shredded. They got serrations. They could eat whole bones. The only thing that ate rex was probably another rex. Man, that thing was a badass. I can't wait for Pete to get here. He's going to be here shortly. King of Tyrannosaurs. Pete's the expert. He's dug more Tyrannosaurus rex up than anybody in the world. We're going to see if this thing is an actual nanotyrannosaur. I can't wait to show him this dinosaur because I know he's going to be freaking about it. I'm associated with T-Rex because of the dinosaur Sue, the most complete T-Rex that's been found to date. Besides Sue, we've collected another nine other skeletons of T-Rex on exhibit in very, very important museums. Hey, guys. Hey, Peter. Peter. I got another cool dinosaur to show you. I got a whole mess of casts in the car, Hi, too. It's good to see you, Peter. Pete Larson brought along casts of specific T-Rex bones to compare to the specimen here in the lab. But first, he needs to see what the team has uncovered. I've looked at almost every specimen of T-Rex that's been collected, so I'm pretty familiar with every last nook and cranny in a T-Rex skeleton. Whoa. The whole pelvis is here and a leg? Holy cow. And right in front of you are the scapulas and then Oh yeah, humerus, right there. So... Oh yeah, that's very cool. Such a wonderful fossil. We got ribs, we got vertebrae, we got legs, we got pelvis, we got arms. And the characteristics are really what are gonna point out the differences between a T-Rex and a nanotranosaur. Oh, far out, look at this. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> that's the best part. Yeah, most of the skulls right in this pocket. Oh, and a brain case, look at that, holy crap. That is super, super important because one really convincing thing is that the top of T-Rex's head would be carried like this, almost parallel to the ground. Nanotyrannus has dipped down oh. substantially. Cool. Based on his research, Pete already believes that Nanotyrannus is a valid species. So Nanotyrannus is a very close relative of Tyrannosaurus rex. You can kind of think of it as sort of a smaller, lighter, faster animal. But many scientists dismiss nanos as being juvenile T-Rexes. Pete is hoping this will be the specimen to prove them wrong. So just about anywhere we look in the skeleton, we'll see morphological differences between Nanotrannus and Tyrannosaurus rex. That means clear differences in shapes, structures, and even quantities of bones. Looking at the maxilla, we're going to find it's going to have 16 or 17 teeth in the maxilla. T-Rex has 11 to 13. But there's also evidence related to how the bones changed as the animal grew. Didn't you say you had a nasal that showed more fusion? We do, yeah. Oh, here yeah. we go. The smaller bone is from Clayton's team's dinosaur, and the larger is a cast from a T-Rex. One of the Tyrannosaur characters is their nasals fused together, giving their skull a lot of strength. Looking at the nasals, there's a left and a right. And when they're young, they're separate bones. But as they get older, they fuse together to the point that you can't see that they were ever two separate bones. On the T-Rex, you can see where the point of fusion is, and it's still kind of open here at the front and at the back. But on this, it's completely fused. If their smaller specimen was a juvenile T-Rex, it should be less fused than the T-Rex cast. Which is the older individual? I'd say this one is. That tells you you have an adult specimen. I wasn't aware of those differences. The palette on the little guy, it's all completely grew together and there's no lines in it. And the T-Rex palette that we turned over, you can still see big lines and it's a full grown adult T-Rex. Man, it's hard to argue stuff like that. But those scientists who do argue that nanos are juvenile rexes used a microscope to look at the fossilized cells of alleged nanotyrannosaur bones. They saw that the bones were still in the process of growing when the animal died. 
using histological methods where they count growth rings, they're saying, okay, it's not completely finished growing yet, so it must be a juvenile T-Rex. But Pete thinks they've gotten bogged down in that one detail and can't see the bigger picture. What they're saying is, if I had a chimpanzee and they take my bones and the chimpanzee's bones and they find that the chimpanzee is younger than me and saying, well, it must be a juvenile Pete Larson or a juvenile, a juvenile Homo sapien. It's easy to see why there's confusion because there's so many similarities. And with only about five specimens on the books, scientists don't have much material to study. The more evidence you get, the more you have to compare with. And this is the most complete one that I'm aware of. I mean, the evidence is here. But we got some stuff over here we got to show you too. Oh, I can't wait. Oh yeah, look at this, hoo, hoo, hoo. This is exactly what we need, exactly what we need to end the controversy. They're the best, they're awesome. Yeah, look at this, hoo, hoo, hoo. On the table are the hand bones and claws of the team's theropod. This is this guy. Right next to replicas of the same kinds of bones from several T-Rex specimens. Here's all we know about the hands of T-Rex. An adult Rex's arms and hands are famously tiny compared to its massive body. A young T-Rex's arms should be similar, only smaller. If this is a juvenile T-Rex, the Rex cast that Pete's bringing in today all should be bigger than the bones from the dinosaur we dug up this summer. Every hand bone that we have from T-Rex is actually smaller than every hand bone we have from this specimen. The bone that's just the killer here is this, which is this new Tyrannosaurus that you guys found. This is one of the biggest of all the T-Rexes. This is gonna grow into this. Give me a break. Arms don't shrink when you grow. There's like this much difference in the same bone, and this is the baby. It was awesome to see those casts together and see, you know, how can you argue that? This is the thumb claw that you just found. And here's the biggest T-Rex hand claw. Why would something that weighs eight times as much as this one have a smaller claw if they're the same species? You'd have to shrink every one of those hands in order to turn a Nanotyrannus into a Tyrannosaurus Rex as it grows up. Makes no sense at all. What do you think, Peter? I think it's freaking fantastic. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Excellent. You know, you found the perfect fossil for what we need right now to end this silly debate about whether Nanotyrannus is a juvenile T-Rex or not. And here's the proof right here. That right there tells me that this is Nanotranus. Right on. It's good to hear you say that. One of the kings in our industry right here verifies <laughs> right. it for us. Yeah. You can't beat that. The proof is here. The proof is here. I don't see how anybody can argue with that anymore. For my colleagues who think that this is really a juvenile T-Rex, I'd say to them, game over. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>